What is going on, everyone? Badger here. Should have liked and sub, and let's get into this. Uh, got another one from The Drinker and uh, Frozen Empire, which, again, the, the ringing endorsement of 2024, it just, well, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And uh, for me personally, they didn't disrespect any of the legacy characters, and they actually had something to do. So for that alone, it gets like a 5.5, 6 out of a 10 on a good day, if I'm feeling generous. Uh, but here we have The Critical Drinker, and just, yes, it is a reaction. Um, I do three videos a day. I think there's room for a reaction video to uh, Gary or Drinker every once in a while. And I've seen Drinker himself tell Tyrone Magnus that he likes his reaction videos because, uh, you know, it lets him see where the jokes landed and <clears throat> people are receiving it. And, uh, you know, Tyrone has hit 2 million subscribers being able to do reaction videos and normal videos. And, uh, yeah, I, I, this is, you know, one of those lovely comments politely saying, you know, why, why do you have to do those reaction videos? Uh, you know, can't you find your own voice? I got my own voice. It's very well defined, and you can see it. Like I said, like three videos a day and streams on Saturday and so twice on Friday and on Saturday. So it's it's fine to react. And also, Drinker told me personally he liked my reactions to his videos, and it's one of the reasons why he had me on open bar. So with that housekeeping done, let's see what the legend himself thought of Frozen. And I can't wait to see what he thinks of the lesbian ghosts. Uh, ghost singular. One of the mantras of my now for at least a minute there. So yeah, lesbian ghosts. Modern entertainment has got to be well. At least it isn't. A lot of films these days have managed. <laughs> and that's how I started. At least, well, not at least it isn't, but at least they didn't. Larry, at least they didn't ruin the legacy characters more. To avoid a lot of well-deserved criticism, simply by virtue of being slightly better than the absolute fecal matter that preceded them. Well, at least until that sweet, sweet dopamine rush dies down and the thinking part of your brain starts working again. So what if The Force Awakens was a tedious, unimaginative rehash of A New Hope with most of the brains and personality sucked out of it? At least it wasn't the prequels. So what if Prey was a dumb, pedestrian, unbelievable attempt to milk a dead... And I like the prequels. I accepted The Force Awakens because I was like, well, maybe we'll get the expanded universe adapted. And we'll, at the very least, we'll get to see Luke Skywalker as a Jedi Master at the height of his power. <sighs> Ed franchise with a comically incompetent antagonist and a main character that was only one step above the tediously predictable girl bosses that are slowly stomping every major franchise into oblivion. What the hell? At least it wasn't The Predator. Ghostbusters Afterlife was an utterly shameless cash grab coasting on pure nostalgia bait and key jangling that completely abandoned the sharp, dry humor of the original and had nothing even resembling an original story. Uh, but it, but at least it didn't do whatever the hell Ghostbusters 2016 did, and it treated the legacy characters with respect. I'm gonna call that my bingo card. Well, at least it wasn't Ghostbusters 2016, am I right? And the thing is, oh. I'm not excluding myself. Which, by the way, I've still never even attempted to watch Ghostbusters 2016, so... Please, maybe that's a watch party we could all do. So from this crap either, because I completely bought into the bullshit just as much as anyone else, and even gave the film a mildly positive review back in the day. But just like waking up from a two-day bender with the world's worst hangover and a dead body on your bedroom floor, time and space have allowed me to see that film for exactly what it was. So I wasn't exactly Shite. thrilled at the prospect of Frozen Empire, another Ghostbusters movie, once again centering around a bunch of asshole teenagers that I don't give a shit about, while the original... Again, another one of those, well, they weren't nearly as bad as other teenagers in other movies. I, uh, yeah. <clears throat> the kid from Stranger Things is the kid from Stranger Things. It's, boy, I think he's going to permanently look like that. Cast look on with the kind of strained good humor of Chris Hemsworth in Love and Thunder. Jesus, we waited like 30 years for a proper sequel to the second movie, and now they're churning out these low-effort knockoffs quicker than Marvel can crap out Disney Plus shows. Anyway, I digress. By the way, just play the game. Just play uh, Star uh, <laughs> Star Just play Ghostbusters the game on Steam. It, it's based on what was going to be the third movie where Ben Stiller was going to be a new member of the team. They just made that character the video game character. And all of the, at the time, Harold Ramis, still alive, all, everyone, Bill Murray, everyone did their voices for their game characters. It's really good. Totally worth a playthrough. Yes. So let's start by answering a few simple questions, shall we? Is Frozen Empire better than Ghostbusters 2016? Yes. Yes. Is it better than Afterlife? Yes. Yes. Is it actually a good movie, though? No. No. No, it isn't. 
I mean, it's definitely a step up. It wasn't a bad movie. I wasn't checking my my uh, my watch, but like, it's I'll never watch it again. I'll never purposefully watch it again. From his predecessor, in the sense that it actually tells a somewhat original story instead of just rehashing the first film beat for beat. It also gives the original cast a little bit more to do, rather than just showing up in the finale with absolutely zero explanation. And it once again brings the Ghostbusters back to their home in New York City, instead of setting the action in a fucking cornfield in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. That's nice and all, but the film is ultimately let down by a generic villain that makes absolutely no impression at all, chronically unfunny jokes that fall flatter than Zendaya's chest, and a cast that's so overstuffed that none of them get the development they badly needs. In short, in short, it's a bad movie that's probably going to get cut a lot of slack because, again, it's slightly better than what came before yeah. it. Anyway, yeah. let's shit out. I say Dan Aykroyd basically just plays himself. Uh, it's, it's good, though. It is good because he's into the occult and aliens and ghosts this plot summary so we can all go home. So the film picks up a while after the events of the first movie. I don't know exactly how long because it never actually tells us and I don't care enough to look it up. The point is that the Spenglers have magically relocated to New York City between the two films and are now working full time as Ghostbusters despite the fact that the only one with even a passing understanding of the technology they're using is Phoebe, the 15 year old child genius who can instantly un It is definitely a, a girl that's the key to everything story understand super advanced nuclear physics because of course she can. Because if there's one trope of modern cinema that we all absolutely love, it's the know-it-all teenage science prodigy with technical knowledge far beyond anything she could possibly have learned at such a young age. Anyway, the team get into trouble with the mayor because it turns out that driving down a crowded street in the middle of New York City indiscriminately firing particle beam weapons isn't the safest way to get around. Who knew? Phoebe then gets booted off the team because she's too young for ghosts. And no word how he is still somehow mayor, even though he... <laughs> Maybe he only had that one... <laughs> That one term in the original movies, and now he's back somehow because everything old is new again. Boston, and it's fucking insane when you realize that this only happens because the mayor forces them to do it. This film pitches him as the antagonist, but God knows why, he's by far the most responsible character in the entire movie. Like, her parents would have been totally chill with their 15-year-old daughter risking her life on a daily basis, using highly dangerous experimental technology to combat supernatural entities with unknown powers and abilities. Fuck. Yeah, it's some it's some cognitive uh, dissonance. They do let her do some extremely reckless uh, things because she's smart. Because she's smart. Because it's written how smart she is. This nonsense. I think we can all safely conclude that teenagers are annoying as fuck at the best of times. And the last thing I want is a whole bunch of them crowbarred into my Ghostbusters movie. Anyway, whatever. So Phoebe's down in the dumps now, but then she meets a female ghost named Melody. This comes out of nowhere when this scene happened i thought it was going to be the harold ramus ghost again like some sort of ancestor scene nope lesbian ghost romance which we find out later is to manipulate her but yeah comes out of nowhere super fucking creepy for some reason uh especially since she just looks way older now <laughs> I, yeah it just didn't work didn't work comes out of nowhere my friend was like what the fuck and instantly gets the big gay for her. Although, I have to admit, the whole teen romance thing becomes a bit creepy when you realize the actress playing Melody is in her 20s now and looks like she's in her 30s. Also, how come when most people turn into ghosts, they end up looking like this? Or this? Or this? But Melody looks exactly the same as she did when she was alive. It's almost like the writers are totally making up the rules. Ghost body ableism as they go along. Ah, whatever, who cares? Meanwhile, problems are brewing at Ghostbusters HQ because the containment system's been storing ghosts for 40 years now and is in danger of overloads. And while all this is going on, Ray inherits a magical bullshit MacGuffin ball that actually contains the trapped spirit of an ancient demon god that can control other ghosts and freeze the entire world if it gets released. Wow, that sounds bad. Sure hope none of the characters do anything totally stupid that causes it to get released. So then Phoebe does something totally stupid by turning herself into a ghost so she can scissor with Melody or something. Fucking scissor, which doesn't make any sense because <clears throat> the Ray character gets like blown in the first movie by a ghost, but he didn't have to turn into a ghost to have physical contact with a ghost. So I 
I don't understand beyond plot contrivance why she did this. And, but that allows the demon thing to possess her physical body and, and release why. it from its prison, and then it freezes the entirety of New York City. So the Ghostbusters, old and new, have to work together to defeat the demon thing and save New York, and then everything goes back to normal, despite all of the major characters being literally frozen solid, which I'm pretty sure would be fatal, but whatever. And that's it, that's the plot for Frozen Empire. If I had well, and the reason uh, the kid, uh, she's the key to everything, because I guess he's not going to cover it, is that uh, all of their proton packs were, were not working. And so she uh, melts down part of the original artifact that was containing it and lines her gun with it. So only her proto gun works on, <clears throat> on the monster. I had to pin down the single biggest problem with this movie. I'd say that it's just got way too much shit going on. There's too many. Yeah. This character does not need to exist. I yeah, he had a couple lines that weren't horrible, but the whole fire bending ethic, uh, mythical guard uh, guardian that was supposed to fight the big bad just didn't need it. He could have just had the original Ghostbusters in the family and really made it a family generations thing. Instead, it turned into this weird. We know why he got included. Too many subplots. Too included inclusion too many different story branches and way too many characters the original movie worked so well because it had a tight well-written cast who complemented and sparked off each other perfectly aside from the four ghostbusters the only significant players were dana barrett lewis tully and walter peck and that's a grand total of seven characters and even then peck was marginal because he was just there to fuck things up as a result you got a lot more time to get to know everyone they all had a purpose in the story and they felt like they belongs this movie on the other hand has got no fewer than four and i have no idea who she is they said her name once i assume that's ernie hudson's daughter but i totally don't remember if that is if she's from the first movie and i, I either way because i barely remembered podcast four teenage characters the two parents the three original ghostbusters gay ghost lady and mystical indian man that's 11 major characters that the script has to juggle and it just becomes impossible there's no room for any of them to breathe they don't get properly developed arcs and most of them barely even get characterized you could easily have dropped Trevor, Lucky, and podcasts from the script and lost nothing of value because they contribute fuck all to this movie and they're all pretty annoying in their own way. Paul Rudd is equally wasted. He gets the barest suggestion of a character arc as he struggles to fit into a paternal role as... Yeah, I say this is what they should have focused on is that family dynamic of him going from their teacher friend to parental figure. Phoebe's stepfather, and there's one single dramatic scene where he has to lay down the law to her that actually felt real and honest. And I remember thinking at the time, they're totally going to fuck this up with some stupid self-deprecating joke because we can't possibly have a strong fatherly figure putting our science genius girl boss in her place and get away with it. And sure enough, there it was. This right here is what happened when a whole generation of fatherless children grow up into neurotic, emotionally stunted adults and start writing movie scripts that have to deal with paternal relationships. The other aspect this film doesn't seem to know what to juggle are the original Ghostbusters, who just kind of hang around. With yeah, there was like a sort of a subplot of he's, he's a YouTuber now with podcast uh, filming him and helping him. And he very much just he just act like modern day Dan Aykroyd. But I'm fine with that. But I wish we had had more of this. You could have cut a lot of those characters and just gone with this storyline. With no clear role in the story. What we really needed with these films was a passing of the torch kind of movie where they have one last adventure and then definitively retire into the role of mentors and allow the next generation to take up the mantle. The yeah. problem is that we've never had this. And after two movies of them just kind of showing up whenever we need a nostalgia hit, it feels like it's too late to actually implement it. It is. There's one single late. solitary scene between Ray and Winston where they talk about getting old and what to do with the time they have left, and it's great for what it is, but in isolation it doesn't amount to anything because it doesn't factor into a larger character arc. It's just thrown in there like so many other things in this film, including the game. And Ray is already sort of retired. He has an occult store. He's not a main Ghostbuster, so he's already enjoying and retiring in his, his, elder, his elder years. Gags. The original Ghostbusters is a film that can still make me laugh even today. So much of the humour was perfectly written, surprisingly dry and understated, perfectly timed and expertly delivered. It worked because it was smart as well as funny, and it expected the audience to be equally smart to keep up. Frozen Empire, on the other hand, falls squarely into the Marvel style of joke delivery, pitching its gags at preschooler level and then refusing to move beyond it. And well, it just becomes kind of depressing when you look at where we were and where we are now.
ultimately, Frozen Empire sits no. in that weird middle ground of the Ghostbusters franchise, not as obviously offensive to human dignity as the 2016 movie, or as shamelessly opportunistic as Afterlife, but just kind of blandly boring and forgettable. A movie that seems to have arrived with little fanfare, trying to cater to an audience that doesn't seem particularly excited for it, but trading on the brand name just enough that it's probably going to make money. I'm willing to bet the studio have got like five more of these things planned. I don't think we'll see another one. Man, if we saw another, because I, I, I guess I could see a third one tying this, particularly with the family. Uh, that They would have to make insane money, I think, for that. Uh, I, I just can't. I can't. No. With a young cast that can spin this franchise out for decades, but I'd be lying if I said I was interested in joining them for the rides. I hate to say it, but Boston doesn't make me feel good anymore. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now. Like all of these franchises, yes, it, it could still be done, and it could this could have been done. This could have worked. There's moments where it sort of works, and then they fall to the lazy like Marvel tropes like he was talking about. Um, yeah, definitely not a recommend of spending your money to go see this in the theaters, but if you're a super hardcore Ghostbuster fan, they don't get – it's not offensive which is what we can hope for these days. Well, it's not offensive to you uh, and your sensibilities. I don't quite feel like it was made by people that hate me, which is always nice. But uh, we'll see. Let me know what you think of this movie in the comments. If you if you thought that uh, Bill Murray phoned it in or if uh, the too many characters, et cetera, et cetera. Either way, I did enjoy it for what it was, but I don't think they should make any more. They, they shouldn't any more. They should. They should just stop. So uh, make sure to like, share, and sub. If you've done that, thank you. If you're going to do that, thank you. And well. Well. Bye.